What's up guys? So today I am back in my garage for another DIY tutorial video. This is it. Finally, I'm getting around to making the DIY rear diffuser video. Now you may have noticed I'm also wearing a Wheelwell shirt and since I'm wearing the shirt, I figured I'd tell you about the site. Wheelwell is specifically built for car people like you and like me. I have a brand page on there. So does TJ Hunt, Evan Shanks, that dude in blue, a bunch of people. In fact, there are several people on there who are not even YouTubers who have some really cool builds going on and I think it's definitely worth checking out. You could upload your car, upload pictures, modifications that you have done to it, uh, tell your story about it, a whole bunch of cool stuff. So if you're at all interested in wheelwell.com and being on the cutting edge of what's cool in the car community, you should definitely check it out. With that being said, I'm gonna get started with this tutorial here. And I just wanna say upfront that what I'm gonna show you is the process of how to build a rear diffuser. What I'm showing you is not actually gonna go on a car. In fact, it's gonna be a model. It's going to be to a smaller scale to save time. So with that being said, let's get started. I have scissors here. I have a ruler. A yardstick also works well. I have a utility knife or a box cutter with spare blades. And I have found that this or a utility knife does a good job of cutting in straight lines where scissors don't because these boards are somewhat thick. I also have truck bed liner, which I will use at the very end. I have contact cement, which I will explain. Now I also have blue painter's tape. And I actually recommend using standard masking tape because it is cheaper and it is more adhesive. And I only have painter's tape because that's what I have on hand, but I recommend regular masking tape. Lastly, I have these foam boards here, which are half inch thick foam board. I found this at Hobby Lobby. I have not seen it at any other uh, craft stores, but they may carry it. I recommend using half inch thick board because this is very sturdy. And as you can see, it is difficult to bend and the thinner boards will bend and they are not nearly as sturdy. So they may work for you, but I highly recommend using these thick foam boards and they are always on sale at Hobby Lobby. Now, when it comes to these foam boards, I actually use three of them. I only have two of them with me, but if you're building your own rear diffuser, you most likely will need three or maybe four sheets. I recommend buying four, and then you could always return a fourth one if you'd end up not needing it. Also, I have fiberglass resin here, which I will not use, but I will show you how to use that. And I don't have fiberglass, but I do recommend using the woven fiberglass sheets because those seem to work best. You can easily cut them into shapes and sizes that work for you. You also need a brush to apply your fiberglass and a respirator when you're using the resin because it's pretty nasty stuff. So the main idea behind the rear diffuser is to use these foam boards as the substrate, use these as the main support and coat them in fiberglass for added rigidity and finish it off with truck bed liner because it is even more durable. So the first thing I'm going to do is, as I said, this is going to be a model. So I'm gonna cut this board in half because when I built mine, I actually had to put two of these side by side and stick them together. So I'm going to use this piece for the fins or stabilizers, strakes, whatever you wanna call them and I'll cut those out a little bit later, but I'm going to start with this piece right here. Now, when you cut this, you obviously want to use a straight edge and you want to square everything up to make sure it's nice and square. For my demonstration purposes, I'm not too worried about it, but I'm going to just eyeball this and I'm going to cut. Now, this foam board is very thick, so don't worry about cutting through on the first time. You're probably gonna mess it up. Instead, make several smaller cuts and just take your time going through it. If you have to, you could always flip it over and make the cut from the other side as well. So now that I have my two pieces, 
Again, imagine that these are full size sheets. I am going to coat them with this masking tape and I wanna cover every inch of these because later on when I use this fiberglass resin, if I don't coat this foam, the fiberglass resin will actually eat through it and so will the truck bed liner or anything else. So if I coat this in masking tape completely, then I could brush on my fiberglass resin and not worry about it eating through the foam. Now, when you make your cuts to through your foam, you may have to square off the edge, and you could either do that by trimming it with a razor blade or even using sandpaper. For this little bit right here, I'm gonna just square it up with this razor. So now that I have both pieces completely taped up, I'm going to apply some of this contact cement right in this joint here so that I can push these together and they will stick. So now my contact cement is dry and I want to push these together to make one piece. Again, like I said, just a reminder, you would do this on two full size sheets of your foam board to make an even bigger piece. I just cut these in half to make a scaled down model so that it saves me time and money. But you would apply the same method to your full size sheets of foam board and you just want to push them together to make one continuous giant piece. So line them up and press them together. Now that they're together, it's not very strong of a joint. So what I want to do is tape over that joint to make it even stronger. Now that I have taped up that joint, it is much stronger than if I hadn't. It's not gonna be quite as strong as the rest of the foam board, but it's a good start. So now, so that you guys can follow along, this here is gonna be facing the front of the car, so there is no confusion. Which means this end is gonna be the back, and this end is also going to be the upside. So for reference, this is going to be the bottom. This is gonna be the front. When I flip it over, this is going to be facing the front of my car, and this side is gonna be facing up towards the bottom of my trunk. Now what I have to do so that this fits my car 
is I have to put a bend in it. Now you could try to make several small cuts and actually make a curve. For my diffuser, all I did it was make one single cut and it's more of a crease. So it's a sharper angle, but honestly, it's more for looks and aesthetics than it is for actual performance. So I don't care so much. So what you have to do is cut on along the bottom side, flip this over right across here. So again, for reference, this is going to be facing the front of your car. This is going to be touching your back bumper. So you want to put a cut right about here so that you could actually bend this foam board. Now this is something that is going to take a lot of trial and error. Uh, you're going to have to test fit it on your car and try it multiple times before you actually commit to uh, making it a certain bend or a certain degree of an angle. But again, I can't really install this on your car for you. So I'm just going to show you how to do it so that you have the knowledge so that you can apply it to your own car. With that being said, I'm again going to use a straight edge here. And it really depends on where you want to put it, but that's really going to be determined by your car and what style you're going for. So right about here looks good for me. So again, I just want to cut this straight across. And I'm not trying to cut through all the way. I don't want to make two pieces. I'm going to cut about halfway because I just want to make a bend in it, make a crease. And now that I made that cut, I will be able to bend just like that. So again, as I said, this is really going to be determined on your car and how the fitment is, but that's all you really want to do is just put a slight bend in it and that will allow it to fit to your bumper. So the next thing I need to do is cut out my stabilizers and I'm actually going to cut a notch into them so that they fit properly and they will hold this at the correct angle. Now, you could use just about anything as a template for your stabilizers. I'm just going to use this piece of a Pepsi box because that's really all I need. And the design of your stabilizers is really going to depend to you. Uh, you could design them however you want, really, as far as the style goes. All they have to do is obviously line up straight and add some stability. So the purpose of them is to help direct air in a straight direction coming off the back of your car. But again, as I said, this is more for uh, looks and aesthetics than it is for function. It really just depends on what style you like. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that my template is straight. And to do that, I'm going to use a straight edge. And now I'm going to set my template aside for a minute. Now this is something you would have to try on your car. You would have to actually mount this underneath your car and figure out how much of a bend you need. But once you hold it there and figure out what you need, then I would tape this in place so that angle holds and you know exactly how you need to cut your stabilizers. So just for this example, I'm going to say that my diffuser needs to bend about that much. So I'm gonna place tape under here and pull it tight. And that will hold my angle. So even though it bends, I know that when that tape here is fully extended, that is the correct angle it needs to be. And with that, now I could actually use my template to cut my stabilizers. I'm just going to guesstimate how much I need to cut out. Again, this is another part that is just trial and error. You kind of have to see what works for you. So I want my stabilizers to come back about this far. And that means that I have to cut out a good portion of this. So once you get most of that cut out, then you could just kind of test fit it and see what works and what doesn't. Lane, 
So after some test fitting, you could see that this template fits my diffuser and the angle that I need. So that means that I could use this template to actually transcribe onto this piece of foam board and I can make my stabilizers from this. Here is a rough cut of my first stabilizer. I am going to have to trim this up with my razor blade and some sandpaper, but I'm going to make at least two more of these for my diffuser. You can add as many or as few as you'd like, but I think I'm gonna make three for this one. Now, when you're applying tape to your stabilizers, you want to make sure that you cut slits in the angles so that it could bend, and you'll tape over that later so that you don't have any gaps. And when you're done, this is what your stabilizer should look like. Should be completely covered in tape with no gaps. And as I said, when you're working in the corners, you may have to cut slits and uh, work it around the corner, but you could always tape over that. It doesn't matter if it's uneven or if there's multiple layers of tape because this is gonna be completely covered in fiberglass eventually.
So now that my stabilizers are finished, all I have to do is attach them to my diffuser. And the first thing I would do is run a line of contact cement on the inside edge of my stabilizers, as well as run a line on my diffuser. Now, since this is just a demonstration and I wanna save time, I'm not actually going to apply contact cement in this demonstration. But if I was building this for real, I definitely would use contact cement. So all I have to do is space out my stabilizers here and apply them. Now, when you're spacing out your stabilizers, keep in mind that your diffuser may be off center from your rear bumper. So you actually wanna space your stabilizers according to your car, not necessarily according to your rear diffuser. Now that I made this cut in here, it's important that I tape this up so that the fiberglass resin doesn't get into the styrofoam and melt it. And to do that, I'm just gonna take a long strip of tape and fold it in that crack. It helps if you use a can or some other object to prop this up while you're trying to attach your stabilizers. Again, if I was doing this for real, I would do a lot more measuring and make sure that my stabilizers are evenly spaced. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to eyeball them and tape them in place. This would be the time to make sure that they are straight and parallel. And if they're not, then you can correct it. All right guys, so here it is. And while this is not the final product, obviously, this is the stage where you would add fiberglass. Now, when I did mine, I coated the entire top and bottom in fiberglass resin. And specifically on the bottom, I laid a few sheets of the woven fiberglass mesh all the way across the diffuser. And I layered probably three or four layers in the joints of the stabilizers to make sure it was nice and secure and it wouldn't move anywhere. So you can add fiberglass if you want to, I highly recommend it. But even without fiberglass, as you can see at this point, it is pretty sturdy. It's obviously just tape and foam board, 
but the angles of this add a lot of strength. Even this joint in the middle is fairly strong because of the joint that is running crosswise. Now my model here is very square. On my car, I tapered it a little bit more. So that's something that's gonna depend on your car and how you're mounting it. The way I see it is it's under your car, so you're really not gonna see too much of it anyhow. So don't get too paranoid if it's a little bit rough looking or it isn't perfect. So it's gonna be fine. After you apply your resin and your fiberglass and you're completely done with that, then I recommend using truck bed liner. Now you can use regular spray paint or possibly even Plasti Dip would work but I recommend truck bed liner. It is a little bit more expensive than standard spray paint, but it also has sand in it and it's going to make it much more durable and you're not gonna have too many cracks or chips in your paint. I have used truck bed liner on mine and I only had to touch it up once in a few areas and it really wasn't that big of a deal. As far as mounting goes, it really depends on your car. You may have to come up with something inventive. You may have to drill through the you know spare wheel well in your trunk and run bolts through and seal that or something like that. I was lucky, I have an STI, so it came with the OEM rear diffuser. So I actually had bolt holes right underneath my trunk that I was able to use and I just had to run new bolts through, uh, through the bottom of this. And all I did was I lined this up and I drilled holes through and I ran bolts through those holes. So for me, that wasn't a big deal. For the back edge, you really don't have to do anything because it is very rigid. I chose to add a strip of aluminum flat bar and run rivets through that through my bumper just for the look more than anything, but you really don't need to do that. Again, that's something that's gonna purely depend on your car because every car is different. Total, I think it cost me around $100, maybe less, maybe more like 70. But again, that really depends on what you have. If you already have fiberglass or fiberglass resin and things like that, then obviously it's gonna be cheaper. But if you don't, you really shouldn't be spending more than about $70 or so, which is still a pretty good option considering what else is out there. Now, with that being said, I do encourage you to search online, search the forums. That's where I got some of my inspiration when I was looking for how to build a DIY rear diffuser. A lot of guys use Lexan or plexiglass, some guys use aluminum. And this is a way to do it with foam boards. So it really comes down to what you wanna do with yours. And I hope this video at least inspired you, gave you some ideas, but I wanna thank you guys for watching. I know it's been a long time that you guys have been waiting for this video. I'll catch you guys next time. Just an FYI, your car's a piece of crap. LOL. That exhaust clip in the beginning of your video sucks. LMFAO, if your car sounds like that, just throw your car away. I'd rather let, this is him quoting, not me, clearly, I'd rather let Queen Latifah in my mouth, wait for it, from a hot air balloon, parentheses, but that's just me. I'm sure your subscribers are very happy. <laughs> yes, I think everybody is happy because they haven't been pooped on by Queen Latifah from a hot air balloon.